It takes like five seconds. All right, all right, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Adding Chrome to Your Community. I'm here with not one, but two lovely ladies who are going to dive deep into what they're doing to help business owners around the world. I think people don't understand the concept of how social media works, but it does go around the world. So um, I have Leah. I know it gets a little confusing with me being Leah and her being Leah and then Natalia here. So um, I'm going to let you each introduce Introduce yourself. So Natalia, kind of just introduce yourself and talk about what the Independent Collective does. Hello. So thank you so much, Leah, for inviting my co-founder and I. So I am the co-founder and CEO of the Independent Collective. And we actually launched in August 2020, and you were initially called the Young Blood Podcast. So uh, there is this newspaper in the Philippines called Philippine Daily Inquirer, and there's a certain category called young blood and these are really usually dedicated to people under the age of 29 and where they submit their personal essays uh, about their lives and when you get published in this it's really a great opportunity for you as writers and it's part and it's in a way uh, um, like your growth as a writer so that's why uh, Leah, who started it initially, wanted to create this podcast to really promote the talent of writers and their passion for writing and their stories behind it. Because we saw how passionate people are, but are not getting enough recognition for it. And so we rebranded to the Independent Collective in January 1, 2022, because we saw the potential of it. And we decided to go beyond just the writers and like focus on whether startup founders, uh, influencers, and even artists or musicians because we really wanted to focus on the talent of Filipinos all over the world. So, yeah. And Leah will add more to that. Yep. Leah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Hello. First off, I just want to say I love your energy, Leah. I know it's almost 8 p.m. there, but I feel like you have just so much sunshine in you. It's so contagious. So, um, I want to start with thanking everyone for being on the live today, whoever's watching. Good day to you. Um, and yeah, adding on to Talia, I think what's really special about Indico or the Independent Collective is the fact that we're highlighting underrepresented stories, voices, and people in the community. So like what Talia said, we used to talk to writers, but now we're really more about small business owners, startup founders, indie artists, etc. So there's that indie part of our name and really stick to it and go for whatever we can in order to uplift those indie artists, business owners, etc. And yeah, we have a lot of projects thanks to, to Talia who keeps them afloat. Seriously, I don't know how she does it, but she's like Wonder Woman. And we are so excited to share more about them. But for now, that's Indico or the Independent Collective in a nutshell. And I really appreciate you ladies being here, too, because the time difference really shines, too. Like, I know you said it's 8 p.m. here, and then over there it's in the morning. So this really shows people that no matter what time zone you are in, you can collaborate and do things together. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, understanding that. And I think it's very important for young folks um, to understand that they can do something and make a difference. Um, and I think I... I guess I can say too, um, like I said before, my VA um, is Filipino and I try to make sure she's valued in her project because there's so much talent that needs to be shared with the rest of the world. And I think you ladies do a great job of doing that. So if we shift our focus to thinking about, so you've already talked about what it is and what the purpose is. So what support are you looking for? So what things or projects can we support, whether we're in the U.S., whether we're in the Philippines, whether we're in any country in between? What are something that we can do as listeners and viewers to support your collective? So actually, we have a lot of projects that anyone can join or anyone can participate in. So we're trying to transition from doing these monthly events or podcast episodes now to focusing on workshops about essay writing. So anyone can join about that. It's like, it's one R entitled, what's it again, Leah, the title of the workshop? It's called The Art of Narrating the Self in the Personal Essay. And yeah, it's based on an actual college coursework. So grab the opportunity, guys. Talia's going to share more about it. 
Yes, so it's actually based on Leah's pre-Harvard program, and it's being taught by a lot of experienced authors, writers, and teachers that, um, from the Philippines, of course. So we're like thinking globally and acting locally, so we're supplementing our experiences with that. And besides the workshops, we also have an anthology series. So we're releasing a lot of anthologies because we want to promote, again, the stories of the Filipinos. And uh, we're launching that on September, and we're just going to release more soon after. So anyone can join as long as you have this love for the Philippines and or maybe you're just a Filipino as well. And so we're also releasing other uh, products as well. So these are like tote bags, but they're sustainable, of course, because we will be collaborating with an, one of the biggest environmental orgs in the Philippines because we really want to make a difference as a business in our act against climate change. Oh, I didn't even realize you have an eco part of it. I love it. I'm an eco person too. I love doing things. There's still things in my life that are going against the environment, but it's one step at a time, um, mm -hmm. baby step. So um, why don't we talk about business in general? So thinking about as a woman in business, because both of you are doing a business and serving people, um, what is one thing you love about being in business and collaborating with other creatives and other business owners? So who wants to take it? Both of you I want to answer, but who wants to take it first? Yeah, Let's go, Tali. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're both too humble. Just kidding. All right, I'll take that. Well, I have to say, um, I love the title. I'm just kidding. Um, I love the people more than anything. I love getting to collaborate with people from around the world, like including you, obviously. And also just working with a team of young, passionate individuals. And I think I just also want to add on to what Talia said. What support are we looking for? I think more than anything, we need more people on the team because we're getting more complex. We're working more hours, especially now that we're digging into different things. Like he, he said, we have an eco part of it when it seems you know, a little bit off from a, a media startup. But we're really trying to do a lot of things because we're finding a way to shed light, like we said earlier, on as many topics, especially if they're underrepresented. And more on the favorite part, like I said, I really love the people. I love the perks of getting to get free advice from older people for free, like I said. Um, I, I don't think I'd ever get the chance to talk to, for example... I'm just going to name drop and be shameless. Um, Roland Ross, like one of the best um, startups here in the Philippines, which um, I mean, he's not the startup, obviously, but he founded the startup. Um, so it's amazing. I get to talk to them. I get to talk to L.A. Hollywood based artists, amazing writers who get published and now their books are about to be turned into films that kind of thing. And I don't think I'm ever going to get to talk to them if I wasn't working on this, you know. Um, and yeah, helping people, obviously. I'm not that egotistic also. Obviously, there's a helping part to it. But I would say that's my favorite part, which is a little bit, I would say, shallow. But, you know, I got to be honest. That's my favorite part of it all. Well, honesty is the best policy. So that's part of it, helping people. But also you got to, your experience, that's the whole part of it is experiencing new things and connecting with other people. What about you, Talia? Actually, I'm very similar to Leah. I love the people and I love seeing how talented people are. Like there's so much untouched talent in the Philippines that is not being recognized enough. And by collaborating with these people, we are able to shine a light to it and really promote their talents to everyone. So like we have these ambassadors and we have these talented people working under us as well. And I also love the passion that I encounter when I interview other people because I it opens me to a lot of different perspectives, different beliefs, different ideas, and it really makes me see a different point of view and it makes it sparks the passion in me actually. I used to not be that uh, passionate person before, but ever since I started Independent Collective, I really saw the beauty and the purpose of having a why in life. And of course, helping people. <laughs> I really like that we're trying to make an impact in the world. And the thing that I like about the Independent Collective is that even though we're a media startup, we're not restricting ourselves to simply entertainment. We're actually trying to do something that will help not only the people, but also the environment as well. And I think that's important, too, for people to realize that 
you're just you're not just a media startup like people when you hear media are like oh one of those people but you're really trying to make yourself stand out and that's what i talk about all the time in this group and i talk about it on my instagram and i talk about it on my pinterest i talk about how you have to stand out and what you two ladies are doing are helping other people stand out but at the same time you're helping yourself stand out so i think that's really important to understand and so my thing is you're you're working with a lot of creative people. So I know you're really trying to get Filipino talent out there, but what collaborations do you do with people in other countries? So for example, if someone watching this live or watching this or listening to this on my podcast or anything, who who are the type of people you want to do collaborations with? Okay. I think I'll take that first. For international, I'll take the international question. Then Tali can focus more on like more grassroots local initiatives. So like I'm a sucker for Western stuff. And I think <laughs> the reason why is because I really wanted to go to States, like study abroad, get the job abroad, even like live abroad. But then with the independent collective, it sort of changed. But um, despite that, I'm so grateful for international ties, especially in the U.S., most of our partners abroad, they're actually based in the East Coast, which is very, I think for me, very nostalgic as I, I love the East. And what we do with them is, number one, collaborate on specific projects. It doesn't really have to be podcast episodes because like recently we met with founders of a tech startup. And this time it's more about um, data analytics, more on technical backgrounds, um, more of the back end sort of side of things. So we're partnering with them too and helping them identify necessary information that their customers might need from our podcast episodes. Um, and we also have partnerships with, um, for example, for aside from the podcast episodes, um, let me know if I'm wrong, Talia, but we have someone from Hong Kong specifically for our anthology series. She was based in Hong Kong. She started her startup in Hong Kong, but now she's in the Philippines. But because we're partnering with her, our anthology series, which will be published in September, will also be circulated in Hong Kong and internationally. So the book will be printed both here in the Philippines and in Hong Kong, but will also be available on ebook or in EPUB version internationally. So I love that we have an international presence, no matter how minuscule. I think what matters is that we're there. We're trying to make a small dent, at least for now. Um, and yeah, our, our international ties are something we value a lot. We learn from their them, their professionalism, and their you know, you know, just their support. Um, and yeah, Talia, feel free to add on to that. I'm sure I forgot a lot of things because Talia's like literally doing everything. So. Yeah, he did. Uh, you said everything right. But it, to add to that, what we do also with international guests or international um, partners, we have this thing called Learn With Me Indigo that we recently did with Leah. So we want have these short workshops because, of course, we want to introduce a different perspective to our viewers. So that's something that we do also with them, along with what Leah said. And as for the local, actually... We are willing to collaborate with anyone. We are very open to anything as long as you have a great idea that you want to suggest and you have a, a story to say, any talent that you want to share. We don't really mind then if you're young or old because actually we get comments about people being like, why are you uh, interviewing someone that's young? And personally, I believe that age shouldn't restrict you because someone could be a young person, but like, a prodigy and someone who has a lot of stories to share, a lot of talent to show to the world. And that's why we're really just open to anyone. And I think that's important to say too, because people have different preferences um, and they think age equals knowledge where people can be 55 years old and just starting out in a craft and they might not be an expert. Whereas a 32 year old might be already 15 years into um, a craft or an artistry. So it's very it's great that you say that because a lot of people look at me and you're like, uh, how much does she really know? She looks like she's 17. So <laughs> I, I totally get that. I totally get that. And I loved being able to be part of your series and teaching your viewers about photography. And I'm um, talking about the visual storytelling aspect. That was so exciting to do. And I was so happy to be part of it. And, you know, 
every time I can talk to someone's audience, I get really excited and bring my energy and try to help people in any way. Because for me, this is helping people. I mean, this is not normal work hours for me. Usually I'm done by 4 30, 5 o'clock and I'm going to bed at 9, 9 p.m. And I'm not afraid to admit that. So being here and giving people a little dose of the independent collective is purposely because I'm trying to make sure that people understand there's other people out there and to widen their circle because just like you said international ties are great so the same thing here someone watching this may want to connect with you ladies and um, all of a sudden they start getting clients because or want other collaborations because you have a large reach over um, a point of period so now I'm going to ask kind of like a different question. So I know you both are on like every platform known to man. So independently, so both of you will answer this, which is your favorite platform? So do you like Facebook the most, TikTok, YouTube, um, Twitter? Like which platform do you like the most? Yeah, I just have to correct you. Um, well, we're wholesome, so we're not on OnlyFans, you know, just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> or not there, but every other platform we're there. So we're not at every platform known to man because you know we're not an OnlyFans. But yeah, um, Talia, you can share your favorite platform. So I guess my favorite platform would be TikTok, definitely. Uh, TikTok is really, really influential in the Philippines. You just need to post like a product review, and suddenly that restaurant that was not noticed before suddenly it's packed. Like this, the long, there's suddenly long lines. People are hyping about, about it, even though it was not noticed before. And I think that's the good thing about TikTok is because we are able to share stories about um, Filipino facts or Filipino stories. So that's what we do on our TikTok. But the problem is we're unable to manage it. So if, I, if not TikTok, it would be probably Facebook because surprisingly, the Filipinos are very active on Facebook. It would be surprising, honestly, if you're a Filipino and not on Facebook. So, yeah, that's a good, that's why. That's true. I also love TikTok just because we have the most followers there. Like I said, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I love getting the idea that we're being seen and heard by so many. But um, on a more, I would say, grounded point of view, I really love being on Facebook because um, it's really where most of our audience is, just like what Talia said. Yeah, and I love how, I don't know, I feel like on Facebook, it's more of like a home base compared to like other platforms where, yeah, I mean, we have more followers on TikTok, but I feel like on Facebook, it's just more homey in a way. Um, and yeah, everything is on Facebook, whereas not everything is on TikTok, on Instagram, or even on our YouTube, but like everything we post on any other platforms, like Facebook has a record of it. So I think Facebook is like the one-stop shop if you want to know us more. It has all their information just because Facebook allows us to do that on a Facebook page. Um, and also it has links to all our pro programs or projects, even to like a recruitment process. Like I said, please, if you're looking for like a side hustle or something you want to be a part of, if you want to be part of a team that you know will try to make this world a better place and will leave a legacy because, you know, we're just that hashtag ambitious, um, then join us, please, by all means. Feel free to visit the Independent Collective on Facebook. Um, and yeah, www.nd-co.com if you want to see more of like the information that we put out formally on our website. Well, I have to admit, I'm not on TikTok, but if I was on TikTok, I would follow you and I would like all your stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm not on TikTok. I can't. I can't do it. I feel like I'm too old to be on TikTok. It's too late mm. for me to be on TikTok. No, that's good. So you won't have to see my thirst traps. That's fine. <laughs> I'm good with that. Oh my God. But so since you are on almost all platforms and since you are a media group i do have to ask for some advice so what is um and one of you can answer this both of you it doesn't matter what is one tip you would give to a business owner that posts on social media to become more visible so for example i'm really big on making reels on instagram because i love it it makes me feel goofy and i just love seeing everyone view my funny dances but that doesn't necessarily mean views doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to become clients. So 
but visibility is key. So what is one thing that, or tip or trick that you would give to someone to help them become more visible on social media? I know it's a tough, broad question. So if you need a minute to think, you can take a minute. <laughs> Got it. I'm just gonna say something right off my head. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I just want to clarify, I feel like I'm contradicting my initial statement. We're not an OnlyFans, but I have, you know, thirst straps. I was just kidding, okay? <laughs> I want to be clear. It wasn't that bad. It was like lip singing and, you know, wearing hoop earrings, you know. But I really disagree with the statement, the bigger the hoops, the bigger, the, you know, the whole thing. So, you know, I just want to clarify that. But anyway, um, in order to, I think, translate audience into clients, you know, to really absorb them and in the interest. You really have to reach out personally, I think, and by doing that, you don't have to reach out personally, you know, by messaging them, but like really give your authentic touch. And I think Talia does that gratefully because she's really handling the man marketing and the management side of things because it makes our, I would say, our, our profile more human instead of a company, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, um, so... It, so it's not a problem, I think, if you're an influencer because you're already being personal, you're being vulnerable, you're being someone people can relate to. But it's harder for businesses, for corporations especially, to have like that, um, I would say, human touch. And I think in order to do that, um, you really have to have a very good, not just a very good marketing team, but also very good, um, I would say, before even the marketing, mission, vision, and why. Um, if you know um, of like many success and also big failure stories in the startup industry, Silicon Valley, like Theranos, um, you know, she was out there to save the world. But then eventually, um, you know, she was just there for the show, like she wasn't in it for the real thing. So that's why it's important. I'm so sorry if I'm name dropping things, the things and names. I hope I don't get sued for this. But um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, you have to be more real in a way. And that's what the independent collective does. Like if you read our captions made by Talia, um, it's very, very personal. It's not like, hey, listen to this podcast episode because number one, two, three, it's more like, um, yeah, these people are cool and amazing. You might want to be friends with them. You might, you might want to listen to our conversation together. And I think for us, audience is equal to client. Because when you press that listen button, you're already contributing to like our reach. And that helps with our um, clients who pay for ads or for podcast episodes. Because even when you don't pay, when you listen, like I think it translates to that for our other, um, for the other end of our business. So yeah, I think number one, I know I said it so long in a, in a very long, very, I would say, tedious manner. But long story short, um, just be more personal, be more vulnerable. Show that you're human more than anything. And I think that's really important. Like I tell people, show up. Like even just if you go live for two minutes and tell them, hey, I had coffee this morning. I walked my dog. I'm having a great day. <laughs> um, people will connect with you because they know who's behind the business. Um, and people are scared to go live. So I tell people there's other ways to show up just by being consistent. Like you said, having authentic captions. Um the big the issue I have right now is a lot of people are trying to use AI to do copywriting. And I'm like, but a it's a robot. It's not going to know human emotions. So I will admit I've used it for headers because sometimes I have writer's block, but I will never, ever use it to do my full post because it's not going to have the same knowledge I have. And it's not going to have the same tone of voice and human connection. So that really makes a difference and i think that's where people get confused with follower count and clients like just because you have a hundred thousand followers on instagram does not mean you have a hundred thousand clients you just have people that are watching you and the more people that watch you and the more authentic you are the more they'll connect to you what about you talia one tip that you would give um to i know leah kind of stole the the show on the big one so <laughs> So yeah, I definitely agree with Leah. But if I were to give one tip, it's do what people actually want. So I think that's a problem that we had in, in the initial stages of our rebrand is we keep on doing so many stuff, doing posting a lot of content, but no one is actually watching because they're not interested in the first place. And we realized that we're not getting much engagement because we're not giving them what they want. And 
we're just doing what we want. And so if we want to have this loyalty or this engagement in our audience, we have to focus on not only our why, of course, but also what people want from us. And that's why we're slowly transitioning to a more financially sustainable company and, of course, a more entertaining company that everyone can just um, involve themselves in because, of course, they want to lift themselves up through us as well. So my thing I always tell people is just keep doing. Like, if something's working, just keep doing it. So, like, that's why... I was like, okay, I'm doing good on Instagram. I am not getting on TikTok because then I'm going to have to start all over with a whole new audience. I love my Instagram people. If that considers me old, that considers me old. But if you're doing something and it's working, you keep doing it. And that's also, it wasn't working for me, so I had to rebrand. So going through a rebrand is not easy, as you know, but also it's very helpful for you to figure out and go through that reflection period so you know what works for you and your audience. And I actually <laughs> went live today on Instagram um, yesterday for you guys, and I talked about how using your social media insights can help you figure out what your audience wants. Because if you're posting constant videos and your audience doesn't watch them, doesn't do anything, doesn't comment, may not be working. So you may need to use your insights to figure out what is working so that they can watch you more, comment more, like more. And like, for me, the biggest thing that people said is I talk too much about social media and I need to talk more about photography. And then I started talking about photography too much and not enough about social media. So now I do every other. So one post is about photography, one post is about social media, and then it evens that out. So I totally get where you're coming from when it talk about authentic self and making sure you do what your audience wants. It's not about you. You could pick the pretty colors and the cool aesthetic feed, but if it's not what your audience wants, then it's not what your audience wants. So I really appreciate both of you coming on today. So besides people listening to your podcast and liking your stuff on Facebook and going to all your platforms except for fans only, uh, what, what else would you like my audience to do to support you so what is something you want them to do whether it's collaborate with you attend your projects and programs what would you like them to do i'm just gonna be blunt and go say donate to our helix pay account you know <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> um, we need every single dollar every single penny but okay um i was just kidding but yeah seriously though if you do want um, to help us out in any way you can. And if you like our content, we have a Helix Pay account, which is kind of like a GoFundMe, but not really. Um, so it's www.helixpay.ph. And then if you um, look for specific companies that are part of Helix Pay, just look for the Independent Collective. Um, it's very interesting also that you asked that because um, I think our number one problem right now is really digging deep into something and then making that thing our hero. Like right now we're doing so many things. So um, one thing that we'd appreciate our audience is if they would help us with our process by joining our feedback loop. So right now we're trying to do some user experience research rather with our COO who's been with us for like a few months now and just giving so many great ideas. Shout out Kimmy, if you're listening, we love you. Um, and we're trying to get a hold of what really the audience wants, like what Talia said. So number one thing that you can do if you love our content, comment, please. Let us know if you want more of that, if you don't want any of that. Um, respond to, for example, our message, our stories, like send us a message, whether you like it or not. Because I think really what you want matters to us because we want to serve you better. So aside from just liking, we really highly um, I would say want you to, to really comment and engage with us. Let us know what we're doing right. And we're going to do more of that for sure. So like communication more than anything is what we would appreciate. Talia, do you have anything to add to what Leah said? I know she said a lot. <laughs> she keeps stealing your spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm very grateful for Leah 
uh, she actually mentioned the Helix Fair. I actually forgot about it. So thank you so much for mentioning that. And I'll, honestly, all I need to say is to your audience is hopefully you can join our ongoing workshop right now and hopefully purchase even the anthology that comes at the end. The workshop is an essay writing workshop, as I mentioned a while ago. And at the end, uh, enrollees will get a lot of benefits, such as awards, certificate co completion, a chance to be published in our anthology and also will uh, be part of our writers team. So they don't have to be like an actual employee, but they can be a contributor as well. So there's a lot of benefits and hopefully you guys can join. Uh, we put a lot of effort into this workshop and we're so excited to see more faces. Well, go Lee. I'm oh, sorry. No, no, <laughs> I just want to say go Talia and yeah, Leah, write a love story and like send it to us. You might have a more, you know, flourishing love story than, than us and we'd love to read them because, you know, we're hopeless romantics. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate both of you being on today, tonight, whatever time zone everybody is in and um, spreading your knowledge and your joy. And like I said, I really enjoyed being part of your whole media setup when we talked about when I talked about photography. And um, if you are listening, all of their information, so all of their links are linked to the show notes and linked on Facebook, linked on, it will be linked on YouTube, everything. And if you have questions, you want to support them, like they said, just reach out to them, message them, give them feedback, like I always ask of you. So um, they really want to just help their audience. So go ahead, go support them and give them all the love and support that we know this group can give. So as I said before, all of their information will be in the show notes. And if you have any questions that you want me to pass on, they are also in our Facebook group. So you're welcome to comment um, on this video. And if you have questions for them, they'll respond to them. Or if they don't see them, I'll send it to them so you can get your questions answered. So thank you, ladies, for getting up early and being here and answering um, all of my questions. And I will reach out to you. Maybe I might talk about the love story because... Maybe once I get married, I'll actually have a big love story. Right now, it's just a big, huge wedding planning mess. <laughs> yeah, I saw um, your post. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but it is a little stressful. So I am right now not in a loving, loving mood. But um, <laughs> probably be there. Once that day comes and it's beautiful and gorgeous and all the planning is behind me, I'll be like, yay. And then I will still love um, my then husband and fiance now as much as I do now and all that planning and all the headache will be going away and um, but like I said uh, thanks for being here and I look forward to seeing more of what your work has to do and follow I follow you on Instagram so no TikTok but I do follow you on Instagram and Facebook so I look forward to see what you ladies can come up with next thanks everybody for watching and like I said drop comments below Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Bye -bye. Thank you, Leah. We'll be waiting for the wedding invites. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Congrats okay. again.